Have you ever wondered how textiles are dyed? You might think that a black sweater or a blue jeans are dyed in the same way because let's say it, they are garments. So garments are dyed with the same colorants, right? Wrong! Dyeing textiles is very difficult since we deal every day with vegetal fibers such as cotton, animal fibers such as wool, synthetic fibers such as polyester or artificial fibers such as viscose. All these fibers are completely different from each other. They have different chemical structure, different performances. So how can we dye these garments? Chemistry can help. Textile dyers have invented different color stuffs for different fibers. In this video, we will have a quick look at all the different dye stuffs that exist in the textile industry nowadays. Let's have a quick look together. First of all, there are two types of colorants, liquid and solid. Solid dye stuffs are normally dissolved in water when you create the recipe, normally stored in dye stuff stores or in the color kitchen. On the other hand, we have liquid dye stuffs, normally for black colors because black pigments precipitate. These are normally stored in chemical drums or tanks. Why we choose solid instead of liquid? Because normally the textile dyer prefers to make by himself his own dyeing recipe. So the mixing and the blending of all the colorants is performed internally in the dye house, normally in the color mixing department. In the textile world, there are a number of different dye stuffs, but let's start with the first one, acid or anionics dye stuff. They are normally used as premetallized or not premetallized for protein fiber such as wool, silk, cashmere and polyamide. Then we have basic or anionic dye stuff, used for acrylic or monoacrylic, aramid fibers such as metamaramid, cationic polyester. Then there are direct, natural, reactive and VAT dyes or Indian trend dyes used for vegetal fibers such as cotton or linen and artificial fibers such as viscose, cupro. Remember guys that with these colorants you cannot dye the acetate. Last but not least, I have to say that reactive dye stuffs are used also for wool and polyamide since they have the better color fastnesses. Then we have dispersed dye stuffs to dye the polyester acetate or some kind of aramid fibers. Then we have the chrome dye stuffs that were used for wool or protein fibers, not used anymore because not environmental friendly. Then we have pigment based for all fibers. These pigments can actually dye all the fibers but don't bond with the fibers so they have a bonding agent in the blend. Then we have sulfur dyes used for cotton or linen but highly polluting, almost not used anymore. And other special dyes, not common but can be used in textiles like UV, water base, solvent paste, latex, not used because they do not resist washing. This is indeed a general view of all the dye stuffs that exist today in the textile world. I will surely make further videos for each of these current to see how they are used and how they are bonded to the fiber. As you can see, a simple garment is very hard to dye. Remember that all these dye stuffs are actually put in wet processes. They must not be confused with master batches used to dye the polypropylene or other polymers, but they are not dye stuffs per se. If I have a 50% cotton, 50% polyester fabric, how can I dye it? These are very tough question indeed, guys. Actually, you simply put the yarn or the fabric into a dyeing bath with reactive dye stuffs and one with dispersed dyes, so you will have a double bath for the same color. So you will need to contact a very good dyer to obtain a very good uniformity on the black. That's it for today guys, I hope you have enjoyed the content of this video. You will find my details below along with my emails and the reddit. If you need some consultancy or if you have any questions I am at disposal naturally. And yeah, as usual, stay safe, take care. I'll see you guys in the next video.